Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So I know a lot of you guys have seen this story going around the internet for the past few days. You've probably seen these headlines about how eating a vegan diet, a plant-based diet is inherently nutritionally deficient for your brain. It causes all sorts of problems for you, including even becoming more dumb. So what's going on here? Why is this story running across the internet all of a sudden? Well, it turns out it, it can be traced back to one single study. Actually, it wasn't a study, it's just an article published in the British Medical Journal entitled, Could We Be Overlooking a Potential Choline Crisis in the United Kingdom? So this BMJ article points out that choline is a nutrient necessary for having a healthy brain and body. No surprise there. However, I was surprised to learn that most people in the developed world aren't getting their recommended values of choline through their diets. And here's where the article really takes a turn for the worse, as we will see here, that the article asserts that eating animal products is the primary way that people get choline into their diets and movements away from eating animal products, such as the rise in popularity of plant-based diets and veganism, will lead to further problems as far as choline intake goes. So if that's as far as you got reading this article, as most of these online news resources did, you'd be concluding that vegans are completely screwed because this article seems to imply that there are no plant-based sources of choline. You must eat these animal products, which is completely false, and we'll get to all the plant-based sources, uh, sources of choline in a moment. But what I want to really highlight here is that there's a, a dirty little dark secret that the author of this article in the BMJ probably didn't want you to know about. So here's lead author and researcher of the BMJ article, Dr. Emma Derbyshire, a very distinguished researcher. She has written over 150 peer-reviewed publications. And what they didn't mention anywhere in this article, you have to do a little digging, is that Dr. Derbyshire is also a member of the Meat Advisory Panel, which is a panel that provides information about the role of red meat as part of a balanced diet. And this panel is supported by an unrestricted educational grant from none other than the red meat industry. So here's the Meat Advisory Panel's website, meatandhealth.com. Not kidding, this is what it is. Anyway, they have all sorts of information here for health professionals, even news and research. So of course, I'm gonna go click that and see what they have. And here's their most recent article that they linked to, The Real Truth About Meat, Why We Can All Enjoy Red Meat as Part of a Balanced Diet. So in this article written by the red meat industry for the red meat industry's website, they conveniently find a professor of neurobiology who happens to be a member of the meat advisory panel. And he gives his opinion about the World Health Organization's report, which classified red meat and processed meat as carcinogens. And this guy, this professor of the red meat industry says, I do not agree with that report. Red and processed meat do not give you cancer. No surprise, huh? So let me just quickly recap the World Health Organization report, which came out nearly four years ago. They considered over 800 studies, and they concluded that every 50 grams of processed meat consumed increased your chances of colorectal cancer by 18%. And they conclude that the public health recommendations to reduce your consumption of meat are justified. So given the enormity of the evidence that the World Health Organization had to reach their conclusions about the carcinogenic effects of meat, I want to know how much money did meatandhealth.com pay that neurobiologist to say, I do not agree with the report, meat does not cause cancer. Likewise, I want to know how much meatandhealth.com paid Emma Derbyshire to write that report that article about choline, about how most people are deficient in it, and you need to eat more animal products to get choline, making absolutely no mention of the wealth of plant foods that have choline. Bananas, bread, look how high broccoli and Brussels sprouts are, brown rice, chickpeas, dates, flaxseed, lentils are wonderful as well, oranges and peanuts and peanut butter, potatoes, quinoa, Soy milk is great, even spaghetti and tofu is really high too. 
To highlight how absurd these choline deficiency stories are, Dr. Garth Davis posted this to his Facebook. Count me safe from choline deficiency today. The tofu, kale, peanuts, and cauliflower in this delicious bowl from the broth lab in Asheville should give me roughly 400 to 500 milligrams. Phew, now I can relax and avoid becoming dumber. So I've been responding to stories like this for several years now, and I'm starting to notice some patterns, and I really think I understand truly what is happening. And the fact is, we are in an information war against the meat and dairy industry. There's all the peer-reviewed studies, the World Health Organization's conclusions, but none of that matters to the meat and dairy industry. They want business to continue as usual, and when they see an attack on their profits, the rise in plant-based diets, the popularity of Beyond Burgers and other plant-based meats, they are scared and they don't have the facts on their side. So what do they do? They pay these researchers to say what they want them to say. Hey, we'll pay you this much money. Go out and say the World Health Organization report sucks. Or we'll pay you this amount of money and tell people, hey, most people are deficient in choline and the only way to get it is through eating animal products. Making no mention of all the plant sources that I just listed there. I mean, this is misinformation war. So they put out these articles like the one in the BMG that get picked up by the mainstream media and they like shocking headlines you know clickbait sells and people click these articles and they see the headlines yeah vegan diets will make you brain deficient plant-based diets will make you dumber and they don't get to the truth of the matter that the article that these mainstream media resources are citing this article comes from and is paid for by the red meat industry to promote eating meat and persuade you to not go on these ever more popular plant-based diets. So that this is where my channel and others like-minded, like say Mike the Vegan come in, we try to present the facts and provide a counterbalance to the misinformation out there. So hopefully we'll get the views too. So that's where you guys come in. Share this video, like this video, let people know that they should see this, let YouTube know that this video should be suggested so we can try to counter the information war that we're fighting here. So anyway, like, like I said, share it, tell a friend, and and I guess that's it for this time, guys. So comment down below. Let me know what you think about these articles that I keep responding to time and time again. We keep finding out that they're more often than not paid for by the meat and dairy industries. No surprises here, huh, guys? So let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about this misinformation war. And what can I do? What can we do to, to fight this war? So anyway, guys, that's it for now. Like, share, and remember, it doesn't suck being vegan. Stop lying about it, guys. Okay.